this presentation is to give you a quick overview of the changing climates topic. So looking at a graph showing the Earth's climate over the quaternary period, which is about the last 2.6 million years, we can see that the Earth's climate has fluctuated dramatically. Uh, for example, around 350,000 years ago, you can see there was a cold spell. We call these colder spells glacials. In this particular cold spell, the average global temperature was 8 degrees colder than the average uh, global temperature over a long period of time. At the present day, the temperature is currently 1 degrees warmer than average. These warmer spells, we refer to them as interglacials. The most current interglacial that we're in now is called the Holocene. So how do we know that the climate is changing? We need to be able to discuss the range and reliability of evidence that shows that the climate is changing. To collect evidence for climate change, scientists can gather data uh, from several different places. For example, global temperature data. We've been measuring the climate, the temperature with thermometers for around 150 years. And so this gives us a really accurate record showing the temperature changes in different places. And, and this has shown us that on average, the global temperatures have risen by around one degree Celsius since the Industrial Revolution. The only problem with this type of evidence is that many of the thermometers might have been placed in cities. And since they were placed there maybe 100 years ago, those cities have got bigger. And cities tend to be a lot warmer than the surrounding countryside. And so we do need to take that into account. This is known as the urban heat island effect. Another piece of evidence is paintings and diaries. These allow us to see uh, people's uh, representations of what the environment was like going back several hundred years. So, for example, here is a picture showing the River Thames back in the uh, 16th century. You can see that it was frozen, and, and so we can uh, look at that compared to today, where we know that the, the Thames never freezes over. And so we know that back in this particular time, it was colder. The only problem with this type of evidence is that people might exaggerate. Um, it might just be one particular extreme weather event that they're showing in their picture or in their diary, rather than actually the longer term climate. Melting glaciers provided a clear picture record showing how the ice, as it melts further up the mountains, clearly showing that the climate has got warmer over time. We can also look at sea ice positions. And for example, we can see that the amount of ice around the North Pole at the Arctic has, has gradually been shrinking back over the last 30 or 40 years. The type of evidence that goes back the furthest is ice cores. Locked in the ice, uh, when, when it freezes, bubbles of our atmosphere get, get kind of stored in the, in, the, in the ice. And so what scientists can do is they can drill down, and effectively in drilling down, they are going back in time, because those ice cores were frozen many years ago. And so we can count the number of bubbles of CO2 to see how the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere has changed. We can also look at the uh, amount of oxygen-16 and oxygen-18 isotopes. And, and from those, we can actually work out what the actual temperature was at a particular time. And ice cores are really good because they go back uh, up to a million years. And there's no human interference because it's just locked away in the ice. Here are a few examples of, of evidence from those different uh, types of evidence. So for example, from global temperature evidence, it's increased by one degrees. Glaciers have melted by up to 50%, 22% less ice around the North Pole in the Arctic. We've got paintings from the River Thames. We've got diaries and paintings from the medieval ice age. We've got photos of, of glaciers like the Argentier Glacier in Chamonix showing it dramatically retreating. And so all of these different bits of evidence, because they agree, it allows scientists to 
have a pretty clear understanding of how our climate has changed. So, so what has caused the Earth's climate to change so dramatically? If we've got evidence to prove it, we now need to think about what's caused it to happen. So first of all, let's look at the natural causes of climate change. The first natural cause of climate change is called Milankovitch cycles. Milankovitch was the scientist that discovered this particular phenomenon. And he discovered that the Earth's orbit actually changes. It doesn't stay perfectly circular. It gradually becomes more oval and then becomes more circular again. And the most extreme points on those orbits are about 100,000 years apart. What's really interesting is that you can see on our climate that the extremes in temperature are 100,000 years apart. And so what Milankovitch discovered was that when the Earth's orbit becomes more circular, that was causing the glacials. Because the circular orbit was meaning that over the course of a year, less of the sun's energy was, was reaching the Earth, because on average, the sun was further apart. In the interglacials, on the ov more oval shape, you can see at these points, the sun is slightly closer to the Earth, and so that extra energy is what's causing the warming. So that's Milankovitch cycles. Another natural cause of climate change is volcanic eruptions. So for example, Mount Pinatubo, when that erupted in 1991, it produced a huge amount of ash. This ash went up into the atmosphere, and it caused lots of sunlight to be blocked from reaching the ground. This caused a, a cooling effect um, and actually meant that the global temperatures for the year after in the whole world were about one degree Celsius cooler. But of course, once that ash fell back to, to Earth, the uh, Earth warmed up again. And so this effect is only temporary. Another natural cause of climate change is the fact that the energy from the sun doesn't stay the same. When the sun starts to produce sunspots, it's a sign that actually the sun is giving off more bursts of radiation. And those bursts of radiation contain energy, which can cause the Earth to warm up. However, the, the impact of this is only around 0.1 degrees Celsius. And so it certainly doesn't represent or, or explain the huge changes in temperature that we've seen over the Quaternary. Overall, what we can say is that Milankovitch cycles seem to be the biggest natural factor that's affected our climate over the last, over the Quaternary period. Now, some climate skeptics will use evidence such as what I've talked about, and they will argue that climate change is just a natural phenomenon and that it's nothing to do with human activity. So actually, what is the evidence to show that humans are causing climate change? Now, climate change scientists from around the world have all been working together and they make up a group called the, called the IPCC. Now, they concluded that climate change is happening far too quickly to just be a natural event. Here's the evidence for that. This graph shows CO2, carbon dioxide, over the last 400,000 years, and you can see that it has fluctuated. But since 1950, it's been dramatically increasing. We're now over 400 parts per million as of 2015. And so these global carbon dioxide levels are far higher than at any other time in the Earth's history. And the only thing that can explain that is human activity. Taking a step back, actually, some greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide are, are natural. We have around 280 parts per million naturally in the atmosphere. And without those greenhouse gases trapping some of the sun's heat, the Earth's temperature would be about minus 15. It would be far too cold for life. So some greenhouse gases are natural. But what we are doing is enhancing. We're making that greenhouse effect much stronger. And we're doing this mainly through burning fossil fuels. That extra CO2 is causing more heat to be trapped. And actually, it's not just burning things. It's when we uh, chop down trees, deforestation, that releases all that stored carbon dioxide, that carbon that's trapped in the trees. And so we're enhancing the greenhouse effect, and that, that is what's causing the wor world's climate to change even faster than it would naturally. 
The big worry is that if temperatures follow CO2 like they always have done in the past, the temperature matches the CO2 almost exactly. If temperatures follow the CO2 pattern, it's going to lead to really, really serious global impacts. So what are those global impacts of climate change? Let's look at a few together. Well, let's start with temperatures. W one impact is that temperatures are rising. And in fact, they're rising fastest in polar areas. The average global temperature increase, as I've said, is about one degrees over the last 100 years. Now, that leads to knock-on effects. For example, the melting ice. And then that knock-on effect is that it causes sea levels to rise. We've had around 17 centimetres of sea level rise over the last 100 years. The knock-on effect of that is coastal areas all around the world suffer from more coastal flooding. The knock-on effect of that is more money has to be spent on coastal defences. Now, these impacts are felt globally, but also locally. So, for example, that melting ice is causing polar bears to lose their habitat. That coastal flooding is really affecting low-lying islands like Tuvalu in the Pacific. Many people have already had to evacuate because of um, the, the severe flooding from the sea level rise. Overstrand in the UK is eroding faster than ever. Other impacts uh, include the fact that the, the warmer seas from global warming are giving more energy, which is producing more tropical storms. You can see that the average number of tropical storms has dramatically increased over the last few years. And we're getting actually more and more severe storms, for example, Typhoon Haiyan. We're getting more droughts as well, because climate change doesn't just make it warmer, it affects our global weather patterns. We get droughts, we get storms. Let's finally look at climate change impacts in the UK. It's going to have a range of impacts. Some are going to be good, some are going to be bad. In fact, most are probably going to be bad. So actually, what one positive impact might be that we get more tourism step with people staying in the UK if we have warmer, drier summers. The negative impact is that heat waves are often linked to an increase in the number of deaths, particularly for elderly people that are more vulnerable. Hotter summers might lead to things like more people getting skin cancers. It's going to affect the UK's wildlife. For example, already we're seeing beach woodlands struggling to cope with hotter, dry conditions. Species of fish such as Atlantic salmon and trout need cold water. They might struggle to survive. We're already seeing them declining in the warmer, warming English rivers. This is going to affect the food prices, for example, of salmon. Agriculture, we know, is affected. So when we have these longer periods of droughts, the farmers struggle to produce crops, and so the food prices for consumers will increase. On the positive side, we're starting to see in the south more exotic uh, fruits, such as melons, can be grown more easily. The UK wine producing industry has grown due to the hotter, dry conditions that we're now experiencing. Our transport is also impacted. So when we have heat waves, uh, we can see the tar on the roads can start to melt. The railways uh, can, can buckle. When we get the other extreme, because remember, climate change causes our weather to become more uh, unpredictable, uh, we get extreme weather events such as cold spells that lead to our roads getting lots of potholes, and then lots of money has to be spent on repairing those. So as you can see, Climate change is causing a huge range of impacts on the UK. And for each of those impacts, we can think of several knock-on effects. Finally, so what should we do now? The consensus from scientists is that we need to dramatically cut global greenhouse gas emissions. Otherwise, we're going to see the impacts of climate change getting worse and worse. To do this, individuals need to reduce their carbon footprint. And our entire infrastructure is going to need to become less reliant on fossil fuels. Global agreements, such as the Paris Agreement, attempt to do this. The Paris Agreement was an agreement to try to cut uh, or limit the amount of global warming. But the problem with those kind of agreements is that it's hard to get all different countries to all agree. 